It's in this serene setting at the offices of the Great Lakes Safaris in Luzira Hill where I catch up with Amos Wekesa, the CEO and founder of the Great Lakes Safaris, one of the most renowned two companies in the country. Born in 1974 during the Idi Amin era, Amos was raised from an orphanage where he was raised together with other boys that he considers his family. Amos's journey hasn't been a smooth ride to success. I was born in the eastern part of Uganda, um, on a border called Wakaka, a uh, smuggling family, and I not, did not go to school until the age of 10. I was in nursery school at the age of 10. I was taken up by a Salvation Army, where I stayed with other 45 boys uh, from different homes. It was a home of less advantaged kids called Salvation Army, uh, children's home in Tororo. I was there for 13 years of my life, and uh, we went to different schools at St. Peter's College, Tororo, Wairaka, I went to Oguti Primary School. And... Having completed his certificate in tourism in the late 1990s, Wekesa then started up as an office messenger at Bellex Tours, where he was earning just $10 a month. But this was the foundation of his success with humility. I was born on the 22nd of April, so it was after my 27th birthday that I registered Great Lakes Safaris. And when we did just a Great Lakes Safari, it was in a briefcase, I had a briefcase, an invoice, and a receipt book. And then I got a mobile phone at the time. And that's all I had for nine months. Then from there, we moved to a very small office on Rainbow Arcade. Eleven years down the road, Amos Wekesa is now an accomplished entrepreneur where he is running three lodges, all located in some of Uganda's biggest national parks. These lodges, Budongo Eco Lodge, Simba Safaris, and Premat hosts a number of tourists that come into the country. In 2002, January, it was a lady from World Bank. She had come to do, you know, some bit of research in Uganda. So we took her to Queen Elizabeth National Park. She loved her trip. I made sure we gave her the best service. Of course, she told another group that came in May, and this group was six guys that went to Queen Elizabeth National Park. So we gave them an extremely very brilliant tour guide with about 600 different species of birds. But little did I know that was an editor with the Washington Times. This guy went and wrote an article worth $340,000. And after writing that article, people started coming. We've read about Great Lakes Safaris in Washington Times. Currently employing over 250 people in his companies, the God-fearing son of Bugisu Land from Eastern Uganda talks of how he has traveled countries worldwide but still feels Uganda is the best and most beautiful country. I traveled the whole of Uganda. I had seen that, I had seen tourists shedding tears at the airport and thinking this is the best country they've been in. They were asking questions like, why would people be so poor in such a beautiful country? And so I could see it and I started appreciating my own country. I started thinking if I put a lot of effort in actually appreciating my own country, then I'll be able to like a wife. If, if you think your wife is the most ugly woman, you're always abusing her, you're, you know, you never get the benefits out of it. It's the same as the country. If you think Uganda is the worst place there is, you never put effort in trying to discover what is in your neighborhood and use it for the betterment of your own life. And you never even give it back as a country. Amos attributes his success to his humility to God, in fact. During our interactions, the word God and his favor kept popping up. It's 1.30 p.m. and Amos takes a short break of work to pick his children from school. The father of three gets to Rainbow Academy. His children, Alia and Kyle, hop into the car. Amos is married to an American Emmy, whom he met in 2001 while she worked as a missionary in Uganda. 2002, they got married and were blessed with three children, two boys and one girl. I don't know. I then asked Amy how best she would describe her husband. Yeah, um, sense of humor, I think that's a given for anybody who's known him for more than five minutes. <laughs> that's no secret. Um, yeah, he loves his children and they love him. And I think he's, he has tried really hard to build a solid family. Amos's wife is a stay-at-home mother, but Amos pays her a salary. I would stay home with the children, and I've been very grateful for that. I think there are nights where I'm up until 3 o'clock in the morning with one of the children, or more than one of the children, and 
I think, wow, if I had to go to a job the next morning, I don't know how I would manage, I don't know how we would manage. And then the two advocates say success always comes by working as a team, but above all, discovering one's passion. I, I always tell young people to try and discover their passion. That's number one, you must discover your passion. But at the same time, as a Christian, I think they also must have a commitment to God. Because you know God is the one who blesses the works of our hands. He's the one who safeguards us at the time of trouble. He's the one who gives us the wisdom. He opens the ways for us. I believe so. But who are the people who played a pivotal role in his life? There's a particular guy who just died recently called Bahinguza James. He was brutally honest. And, and I liked that. And I, I tried to emulate this, I emulate this guy. He confronted me on several times, but he taught me a lot of things. He lived a very nice life, and I remember when he died, everybody spoke so well of this guy, and I looked up to him in a number of ways, uh, generally speaking. I then asked him what his major focus and goal is, especially regarding Uganda, that he loves so much. And I want to do a campaign where every Ugandan is able to write good stories about Uganda. And the other thing is that, I, like of late, I was telling people, I have a commitment to Uganda, and the president of Uganda doesn't have to know this. But you will never find me boarding a plane without having a shirt written on Uganda. Amos spends his free time playing games with his children. To Amos, tourism in Uganda hasn't yet begun. He argues there are very many opportunities that haven't been tapped, stressing the number of tourists that flock Kenya and Tanzania, despite Uganda being voted as a top tourism destination by Travel Guide Lonely Planet for 2012. At 38 years, the sky is the limit for Aimo Swekesa, with several awards and appreciations that have come his way. Maurice Chol. In TV. I want more energy. I want energy.